Hello and welcome back to Eric and Ariel, where we're teaching you how to live a better life. Today we are going to be giving you our top five each tips that have helped us over the years that you can implement right away in your life and instantly improve it. Thanks again for tuning in. Please like this video if you do find it to be helpful. And Ariel's gonna start. My first life hack that I wanna talk about that I use all the time, every single week, is actually buying in bulk. And I know for some of you that might seem pretty obvious, but I didn't actually start buying in bulk until we moved down to South Carolina. And this will include everything for us for um, our groceries as in milk bread, eggs, any snacks that we have around the house, anything that is staple that we always have in the house, we always buy it in bulk. So if we are running low on something, I go to the store and I'll buy, you know, three containers of butter and put a couple in the freezer. And that makes it so I don't have to go to the store that often. And it's really helpful because I always know that we always have backups for everything. So we also do this for anything essential and cleaning supplies and things for our animals. We always buy in bulk. It's a lot cheaper if you buy a giant bag of dog food versus a smaller bag of dog food. Along with this, we also really recommend to purchase a extra freezer unit if you have the space. We purchased one when we moved down here and we bought our juice for 25 bucks. It's in our laundry room, so you never see it, but that thing is always full with all of the uh, extra bulk stuff that we um, continuously purchase, and we just fill that freezer with all of our extra stuff. My first tip is to use a reminder app. I have a reminder app on my phone, and I use it just about every single day for something. Now this seems pretty simple, but the amount of variety of things that I use it on is pretty extensive. So I use it for uh, remembering to take out the trash every week, for my nephew's birthdays, for canceling subscriptions that we had free trials on, just things like that. Now you can tell Google Assistant or Siri to set reminders for you. So you might think, well, why do I need a separate app for that? But I have used Google's version and I just love having the third party app because you can do a lot of variety with it. You can have it send notifications in advance. You can have certain reminders trigger your phone alarm. Uh, there's just quite a variety of ways that you can use it to your advantage. And I have no idea how I survived before I had this app because it saved my butt a million times. For those of us who still have wire headphones, I actually have a knot on my right earbud. So, when I'm in rush to, you know, start listening to music or a podcast or whatever, I see whatever one has a knot, stick it in, and that is a lot easier than me trying to see those little tiny letters. My next tip is to add all the food you hate to a smoothie. Oh gosh, she's talking about smoothies again. Yes, I am. For many years, I forced myself to eat carrots and broccoli, and I hated every minute of it, but I was like, I gotta eat this stuff because it's good for me, and I'm an adult. And he complained the whole time. And I complained the whole time. <laughs> but not anymore, because I found a way around that. One day, I thought to myself, why don't I just try throwing all these carrots that I'm gonna try to eat into my smoothie and just see how it goes and it tasted just fine. Now you can't just make a vegetable smoothie and expect it to taste good. So I recommend using peanut butter or peanut butter powder or even protein powder to mask the flavor. Those things mask the flavors of vegetables extremely well. And in addition to frozen fruit, you can have a really good tasting smoothie that has all these healthy vegetables mixed in with it. So now I get servings of kale, spinach, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, every single day and I love the drink that they're in. So along with Eric's smoothie hack, I also have another one for smoothies. Once you are done with your blender, a great way to clean it besides just kind of spraying it down with water and using a sponge is actually adding a drop or two of soap 
and and if you fill up your blender with that drop of two of soap and filling it about a quarter of the way with really really hot water and then running it again the foam and the bubbles there's going to be so many bubbles and it's going to clean it so much better than and quicker than I have cleaned it with like a sponge and hot water. But you have to do this right after you use it. Do not, do not, do not let it like dry out and get all crusty and gross. Don't, don't do that. Just do it right after you use it. I used to go to hotels when I was younger and loved sleeping on their pillows because they were so much more comfy than the pillow I had at home. Now I go to hotels and I bring my own pillow because their pillows suck. My name is Eric and I'm a pillow snob. Sometimes I say that I could sleep on a stone slab as long as I have my pillow. I was well into my 20s before I finally invested in a quality pillow and I highly suggest that you do the same if you don't have a good pillow. Hopefully you're gonna be on that for eight hours a night and sleep is not something that you should take financial shortcuts on in my opinion. A quality pillow is nowhere near as expensive as a super good mattress. So I think that's a really good first start if you're looking to improve your sleep. A great way to keep your kids or babies from the edge of their crib or their bed is actually to use pool noodles. So Grayson would always get his really chunky thighs stuck into the sides of his crib. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So he would stick his leg out because there was nothing to block him, but you can't really put up a wall because that's a suffocation risk. So what we did was we took some pool noodles, cut it down to the size of his mattress, and stuck those under his sheet. And that would kind of help prevent him from actually like getting his foot wedged between the railing. And when he first started, you know, going into his toddler bed, we lined the edge of his toddler bed with um, those pool noodles as well so he wouldn't fall out of the bed onto the floor. Another great pool noodle trick is to actually put them under your couch. So this will stop any crumbs or any toys that your kids wanna, you know, hide under there. It will stop them from actually being able to put stuff under the couch. And I do suggest you getting a dark colored one. So we actually have a black pool noodle under our couch. And I noticed when we didn't have that, I would find a bunch of different toys or random forks or a bunch a bunch of crumbs that Grayson would push under the couch. So yeah, it saved me some cleaning. It's been very helpful. My next tip is that if you are not a morning person, don't try to become a morning person just because everyone's telling you you should be. I am definitely not a morning person and I have tried to become a morning person many times. I spent a few weeks trying to wake up at about 6 a.m. before work to work on some side projects. And every single morning was such a struggle. I felt exhausted the whole day and I just didn't feel like I was getting quality sleep. And I realized that it's just my biology that I am a night person. A lot of people like to work out in the morning. My workouts in the morning are terrible. I have much better workouts, some of the best workouts I've ever had in my life at like 10 p.m., 11 p.m. even. And I just feel like I'm so much more productive at that time of the night versus the very early morning. Ariel and I hardly ever go to bed at the same time and I think we've come to just acknowledge that we're just very different in that aspect and we're okay with that. So yeah, if you are a night owl such as me, just be true to how your body reacts and definitely go ahead and try to you know become a morning person if you want or just accept that maybe you're meant for the night time. I have one more food hack for you. So we actually keep a tiny little um, magnetic whiteboard on the end of our fridge. So whenever we notice that we are running low on anything, either of us will write it down on the whiteboard and it makes it a lot simpler when I actually do grocery trips. So I will wait until you know, we have a, quite a few items on our list and 
then I will just take a picture of it with my phone and then head off to the store. This has saved me a lot of time from trying to rummage through the fridge or freezer or, you know, the pantry where where we keep like more food and other like essential items if we are running low on anything or we you know want to buy anything in particular we'll just write it on the whiteboard and i will make sure to get it the next time i go to the store i will never use an iron for as long as i live that is a promise i have used a steamer before a few times but it's just kind of a pain to use I have a life hack where you don't have to use either. So this is what I do. Now it does take a little bit of planning because I pick out what I'm going to wear the next day, the night before, and I will just take a normal spray bottle filled with water. I will miss all of the clothes and I will let them hang dry overnight. Um, sometimes it helps to just tuck a little bit to kind of get out the wrinkles as they're wet and then just hang them up and go to bed. And in the morning, pretty much everything you have will be, for the most part, wrinkle-free. There are some wrinkle sprays that you can buy on Amazon for anything that's particularly wrinkly. I haven't used anything but water now for a couple of years and it works just fine. The trick is when you do laundry, as soon as it's done drying, you take the clothes out and you hang them up. If they sit in the hamper or the dryer, they're gonna get wrinkly and you're gonna probably have to iron or steam them. So just be proactive about the laundry, think ahead to what you're gonna wear the next day, and spray those clothes down. So those are 10 life hacks that Ariel and I use almost on a daily basis. And we have found that our lives have improved because of them and we hope yours do the same. We'll catch you next Thursday. Have a good week. See ya. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. <laughs>